A call to employers to better support workers with mental health conditions. This is just one of 12 recommendations which have been laid out to address gaps and improve the well-being of Singaporeans. The Task Force on Mental Health and Well-Being is also inviting the public to share feedback on its preliminary recommendations across three focus areas. Now, the first area looks at improving accessibility, coordination and quality of mental health services. Among the suggestions is a common IT platform. Healthcare and community care providers can use it to smoothen the referral process and enhance information sharing. Our strengthening services and support for youth mental well-being is next. Our recommendations include promoting a healthy use of technology and social media, as well as equipping parents with cyber wellness knowledge so that they can support their children's social well-being. Now, the final focus area is on improving a workplace well-being measures and employment support for those with mental health conditions. A one way is for companies to provide helplines as well as putting in place work-life harmony strategies. The public consultation uh, takes place online and in small groups over the next 10 weeks. One mental health service provider says more needs to be done to tackle the stigma. It's calling for more customised and easily available mental health help for different groups. For instance, children may not be comfortable seeking help from school counsellors. Besides reaching out to parents, how about reaching out to grandparents as well? Because most of the kids are being placed under the care of grandparents. How about support for the youth working adults upon their, their graduation? Because like um, uh, they will be struggling with uh, zero support compared to those who are still studying. For more, Michael Tong joins us. He is a clinical psychologist and professional counsellor at Rogerian Psychology Centre here in Singapore. Mr Tong, good evening. First off, uh, perhaps you can give us your thoughts on the three focus areas that have been outlined in these 12 recommendations that have been proposed. Right. So I think those three focus areas are actually a good starting point. Uh, it shows that as a nation, we are ready to take on mental health seriously. And I understand why those three were picked as well. They're like literally the backbone of the nation. So I think it's a good place to start as we continue to evolve as, as an industry typically. Yeah. A good starting point, uh, you say, but the emphasis here is on increasing uh, the quality as well as the accessibility of mental health care, especially for youth and as well uh, for those at the workplace. But what about for the elderly uh, section of our population, especially as uh, the population here in Singapore ages? Right. So mental health is really diverse. And of course, if we want to talk about offering good quality services and regulation, it's a lot of things. Um, so to start with these three and eventually evolving to taking care of the elderly as well, those are good things as well. Uh, definitely elderly mental health is a serious concern here as well. Uh, we've got quite a large number of population with aging and they have very unique mental health concerns. So this would be probably a good area to go next from uh, where these three focus points are. So, Mr. Thong, on that point, let's zoom in on some of the recommendations that we've seen. Uh, peer support, it seems to be, uh, to feature perhaps in all of these three focus areas, uh, uh, peer support, meaning people at home as well, can be watching out for their loved ones at home and, and particularly those who have elderly parents, perhaps they, they're in close contact with them. How can we better support our loved ones in the most appropriate way when most people are, are not necessarily uh, psychologically trained as you are? So that's a very good question because the first thing we want to provide if we want to provide good support is to equip ourselves with the know-how. And a lot of people don't realize that actually you don't have to be professional in order to know a little bit about mental health. So a good place to start would be equipping ourselves through psychoeducation, learning more about some of the symptoms. Typically in Singapore, some of the biggest concerns are like depression, anxiety. So what are some of the symptoms that you know some of your peers or your family members might be struggling with? And the next thing would be equipping ourselves with basic psychological first aid skills, which will include active listening skills. And that would be able to help us to connect with them, provide some support and to understand you know, if there's a necessity to refer them elsewhere uh, to professional or to the hospitals or et cetera. 
So receiving compassion and empathy from those at home, uh, that might seem easier than maybe seeking it in the workplace, but nearly half of the recommendations from the task force are on improving workplace well-being measures as well. So I'm, I'm glad to see that there is a focus on that, but why is this emphasis uh, being seen now on mental health in the workplace? Right, so as I previously mentioned earlier, um, you know, Singapore having the workforce is basically the backbone of the nation. And since COVID, we saw how the workforce was severely affected because of various different reasons, uh, you know, whether it's a lockdown, whether it's financial situations, or is it whether just working from home and getting burned out because of lack of social support. So all this are critical because uh, the workforce is, is the backbone and uh, it has to continue to be productive. And I can see why this would be a focus area as well. Um, definitely providing enough support so that despite whatever adversities or challenges, people could continue to be productive uh, despite difficult times, basically. And COVID had demonstrated that it's pretty important to know that. Yeah, we need to continue to make headway in understanding mental health and its importance. Mr. Tong, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Michael Tong there from the Rogerian Psychology Centre, Singapore.